around the world, but especially in developing countries, the role of SMMEs cannot be underestimated in respect of contribution to both GDP as well as employment opportunities. In South Africa in particular, according to various reports, small, medium, micro businesses, they make up more than 90% of businesses by number contribute to about 40% of the GDP and employs between 50 and 60% of the people in employment. From a tax revenue perspective, they are equally important. This year to date, by way of example, the SMME sector has contributed over 410 billion rand, which makes up about 30% of the total tax revenue from companies taxes, VAT, as well as employment taxes. The top sectors that makes up this contribution includes the finance sector, manufacturing sector, wholesale and retail, as well as accommodate, catering and accommodation. We've also, and very importantly, injected 102 billion bands of refunds as at the end of February. And this is an important injection of much needed cash, often to struggling businesses in this sector. Our role as a revenue authority is about providing a more enabling environment to this important sector. And what we are doing is firstly, to ensure that we provide active engagement with the sector to provide greater clarity and certainty of their tax obligations. We deliver this in the form of webinars, video guides, of how to fulfill their tax obligations, we deliver public engagements and provide clarity statements in the form of simplified leaflets, newsletters, and other statements on our website. Our second objective is to work hard to make it easier for SMMEs to fulfill this obligation. We have had, for example, a simplified tax introduced, which is turnover tax, that provides a lower rate of taxation for small businesses. We also have introduced e-filing as a feature that makes it possible for small businesses to fulfill most of the obligations online and a dispute resolution processes that makes the resolution of disputes simpler for these businesses. We would be the first to say that we have a long way to go, both as a revenue authority, but also as a government. As stated in commitments by our president and our minister of finance to improve the environment within which small businesses operate in South Africa. Our third objective is to increase our capability to detect and respond to instances of non-compliance. And this is important because whether you're a small business or a big business, it is still important that we honor and comply with the laws. And therefore we cannot, in the interest of honest taxpayers, let those who seek to defraud the fiscus or game the system get away. I also would like to say that as important as the sector is, we face a number of challenges. Firstly, compliance levels are still too low. And we need to work hard to improve compliance levels and ensure that the revenue that is due is collected. Secondly, we have seen an unfortunate low uptake of the turnover tax, which was introduced now more than 10 years ago. We are currently conducting research to understand why and also how else we may simplify tax policy for small businesses. And then thirdly, the high percentage of cash transactions in this segment presents challenges. Challenges firstly for measurement and accounting accuracy across the economy, as well as providing the means for fraud, corrupt and criminal activities to proliferate. 
because we believe of the importance that the SME sector plays in our economy, as well as in the tax base, SARS remains committed to do whatever it needs to do to continue its work to provide greater currency and certainty, continually work to make it easier for these companies and vendors in the sector to fulfill that obligations and in the interest of honest taxpayers work hard to detect and respond to those who still seek to deliberately not comply to these laws. That is our commitment and we hope that our contribution will have a positive multiplier effect to this important segment in our economy. I am Hazel Bonogoto, your tax education ambassador. I'm here to tell you about the different business types that we have within our SMME segment in SARS. We have a sole proprietor, we have a partnership, we have a public or a private company, we have a close corporation, and lastly, we have a cooperative. Let's start by discussing what a sole trader is. With a sole trader, there is no need for yourself to go and register with the CIPC, which is Companies and Intellectual Property Commission. It is a one-man show. There is uh, no need for registration. The second type of uh, business that we are going to discuss, it is a partnership. A partnership is the same concept as a sole trader. The difference is that uh, there is two or more people coming together to start a company. Um, people come with different skills, different resources, with the aim of starting a company. And with a partnership, again, there is no need to go to CIPC to do the formal registration of the company. Um, when it comes to tax, each partner will be taxed individually um, depending on their individual tax rates. Another type of a business within our SMME segment is a private company in a close corporation. This business type requires you to be registered with CIPC first. During the CIPC registration process, you will automatically be registered with SARS and be issued with a corporate income tax number. After registration, you will be required to file your income tax return annually, 12 months after your year end. Commonly, Small businesses year end is February. The CIT form to be used when filing the tax return is called ITR 14. Please note that CIPC no longer registered close corporation. A small business can only register as a private company. The last type of a business that we are going to discuss is a cooperative. A cooperative needs to be registered with CIPC a cooperative is registered for different purposes. It is basically a group of people coming together for different purposes, which could be economic goals, agricultural projects, or it can be for a stock file purposes. The tax that is going to be determined for a cooperative is according to the company's income tax rates. The incentives that we have available for you as our valued SMME are turnover tax, which is the TOT, Small Business Corporation, SBC, Employment Tax Incentive, which is the ETI. Let's start discussing the turnover tax. Turnover tax is aimed at simplifying the administrative burden of the SMME by making it easier for you to comply with SARS. The turnover of the SMME must be 1 million rent or less. 
and the SMME will be taxed according to the turnover tax rate. With uh, the Small Business Corporation now, there is no need to register to be taxed according to the Small Business Corporation. The company simply needs to indicate on the ITR 14, which is the tax return that is submitted by all companies, to indicate that the SMME qualifies to be taxed according to the Small Business Corporation rates. The turnover of the SMME must be 20 million rent or less. The last incentive that we have available, it is the Employment Tax Incentive, ETI. ETI is aimed at reducing the company's pay as you earn on a monthly basis, simply because the company has hired the youth, uh, which are between the age of 19 and 29 years old. Dear taxpayer, the following video will show you how to get your tax compliance status PIN, what used to be called Tax Clearance Certificate TCC, via SARS e-filing. As a business or individual, you will at some point need to provide, confirm, or share your tax compliance status with another entity. This usually happens when you apply for a tender, a new business contract, foreign investment, and or to prove good standing. To log into e-filing, Use your existing username and password. Select the Tax Compliance Status icon on the e-filing dashboard landing page. The Tax Compliance Status Service Activation workpage will be displayed and the Tax Reference Number will be pre-populated on the screen. Select the Tax Compliance Status checkbox, read and accept the disclaimer checkbox and click Activate to proceed with the activation. A message will notify you of the successful initial activation of the service. Thereafter, all functionality will be listed under the Tax Compliance Status menu. You will need to first complete the registration verification to finalize the activation process. If you click Continue, this will display the Entity Reference Number Confirmation Process page. Please note that no changes to details are allowed on this form. Any changes must be made under the SARS Register Details functionality. Carefully read and accept the declaration and then click on the Submit Form button to submit the form to SARS. Click Continue to proceed and this will display the My Compliance Profile page. The My Compliance Profile dashboard displays your individual compliance requirements, the status indicator and the description that reflects the summary status. By selecting the Expand buttons, more information regarding the compliance status will be displayed to guide you on further action should it be necessary. Click Tax Compliance Status Request. On the Type field, a list of TCS request types will be displayed. Select the applicable type. It will be either Tender, Good Standing, Foreign Investment Allowance or Immigration. Then click Request. Complete all mandatory fields on the form and select Submit. Note, if you want to receive an alert when there are changes to your tax compliance status, please make sure you complete your email address on the form. The results will be displayed indicating the request reference number and that your application has been successfully submitted. Click Continue. The tax compliance status page will now display your request. If you expand the option, this will display a summary of the TCS request submitted. Click the Request Reference Number hyperlink and it will display the Tax Compliance Status work page. Here's your Tax Compliance Status PIN. You can share your Tax Compliance PIN with a third party via SMS, email or a printed letter. Note, in order for the letter to be generated, you must log out and log in again. Once the letter is generated for the PIN, the TCS work page will be updated and you can click on the view link to open it. Here you can view your PIN and the PIN expiry date. Note, the PIN is valid for 12 months.
To check which third party has viewed your ping, click on Who Viewed My Status tab on the left menu. Complete the search criteria details and click on the Request button. Congratulations, you have successfully applied for a tax compliance status PIN. You can now log out of e-filing or use other e-filing services.